What's going on guys? My name is Nick and welcome back to Olsen Auto. And before we get into this video guys, make sure you click the link in the upper right hand corner. It'll take you to my giveaway. I'm giving away a brand new GoPro Hero 7 Black with a bunch of accessories. Make sure you guys click the link, watch the video. It's only four minutes long because it's free to enter and you won't want to miss out. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm not at my house. I am actually at college. I'm in my dorm room right now. And I thought, can I actually make a vlog here? So I'm going to try. So I'm actually on my way. I just finished an exam for economics and now I'm about to go record two videos. One of them is going to be a Q&A and another one is sort of like a Q&A. It's a question that someone asked me and I figured I'd make a whole video on because I know a lot of people are asking the same question. So this is probably going to come out before all of those. I have a bunch of videos on backlog I have to start editing. Tonight is going to be a busy, busy night, but I'm hopefully actually going to record that was in English. I'm hopefully going to be recording three videos. One of them is going to be really, really cool. You guys are going to want to subscribe. You won't want to miss this one. It's going to be, can you modify your car with parts from five below? And of course, the only car I have here at the moment is the Prelude. That's what I took up here. So we're going to be modifying the Prelude, my baby, my pride and joy with five below car parts. We're going to let the battery charge up real quick. And then we're going to head out to the Prelude. We're going to try and I guess make some videos here at college. I gotta take the car to a quiet parking lot so that I don't have a bunch of noise in the background, but they're actually gonna be some pretty interesting videos, so uh, let's get to it. Let's go ahead, start up the Prelude. This is a 1991 Honda Prelude with B21A1, uh, cold start, yeah. <laughs> Not that loud, 2.5 inch pace header exhaust, no cat, barely a muffler. The cord's louder, that's kind of sad. All right, 1990 Prelude, five speed stick, B21 under the hood, 2.5 inch pace header exhaust, and uh, a lot of issues, but we're just gonna focus on the good. We're gonna go to a parking spot or a parking lot, and I'm gonna try to film up some other videos, and then this video is gonna get some sweet content as well. Well, 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 now who is just drifting in this parking? Oh, it was me, it was me, it was the e-brake, yeah. Well, next time guys, next time I promise I'll get it on camera on my way out. I'll set up the tripod, we'll get a few little slides, something light. Again, it's a prelude, 30 years old, don't want to beat it to death, but a little e-brake pull here and there never hurt anybody. So now I'm going to be filming a Q&A and another slightly longer video, or maybe shorter, I don't really know, about a single question I was asked relating to how to get into buying and selling motorcycles. Not necessarily flipping, but sort of just... How do you get into building these bikes and cars and what do I do? So I'm going to film that video and then we're going to drift, which is sweet. And then uh, we're going to probably wash the car now because it, it's filthy. It's bad. It's really, really bad. So I just filmed two videos. I did the Q&A and I did the long-term question about how to get into flipping, buying, and selling motorcycles. So make sure you guys check those out. Those are coming out in the future. I would do some drifts in the parking lot, but there are a lot of people here and I don't feel like putting people in danger. That's kind of stupid. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to head to the car wash. We're going to wash up the prelude. And then I think we're going to go to the skate park. I don't even know where there's a skate park around here, but I kind of just want to rip around the scooter and get some content for you guys. Let's go ahead and start up the shit box. Make sure it's in neutral. Gotta let off the clutch, make sure it's in neutral. Alright, it's in neutral. Let's go. There's literally nothing worse than being stuck behind a Kia Soul. Literally nothing. I would rather die. Just got to the car wash and I forgot my towels and my wash mitts and my microfibers back at my dorm. So it's gonna be a half assed car wash. Man. Clean and somewhat dry lewd is a happy lewd. I wish I brought my towels and microfibers because I could have done a bit better, but uh. It's pretty clean. The wheels were really dirty in the back for some reason. Uh, I'm willing to bet both of these rear calipers are sticking a little bit. Plus, I got fresh rotors and pads, so that could be it. But, I wanted. I have two new calipers for the front. I might as well do two in the rear. The car is relatively clean. Not bad. Uh, I think the skate park is pretty close to here, so let's go check that out. Okay, so admittedly, I'm recording this clip four days after the last one been a while it's been too long um yeah so I am recording this clip uh, 
significantly later than I want to. However, uh, we're back. Got to take the pre the gonna take the prelude. Got to check the oil first. Make sure it actually has any. She likes to leak it, so got to make sure it's still got oil. We're gonna be heading the five below. We're gonna be seeing how much we can put into my car for mods. How can we modify my car with five below stuff? Uh, I have some ideas of what I want to do, but I really don't know what five below sells for car mods. So. I guess we're gonna see, we're gonna see what we can make happen, because I think it's gonna be pretty interesting to modify my car at 5 below. I'm also gonna be doing it all in the parking lot, so that'll be cool. I also was thinking, maybe I could do a Walmart edition using Walmart car mods, what can I do? Comment down below if you guys wanna see that, I think that'd be pretty interesting. It'd be a bit more expensive, but I think I'd actually get some quality stuff. Alright, let's check the oil and uh, drive through the highway and traffic to get to 5 below. In a manual, with a shock clutch. quick detach hood rod. So the coolant was low for whatever reason, so I topped that off with some good old Acadia spring water from uh, your favorite local grocery store. And the oil's a bit low, so we're just gonna go ahead and top it off with the highest quality O'Reilly synthetic they sell. Let's, uh, let's do that. No funnel gang. All right, oil, coolant, check, check. Cold start, 1990 prelude, uh, 2.5 inch pace setter exhaust, you dig? Now, I went and I got Subway a few nights back, like two or three nights back, and of course the prelude has no cup holders anywhere in the car, and I spilled Sprite there and there and on my carpet and on the seat right here, and now I gotta get the seat steam cleaned and I need to get some interior cleaner. So we might hit Walmart anyway. I don't know, my battery's about to die, but let's go to Five Below and let's get some cheap car mods. All right, we arrived to the mall, I think. I honestly don't know where Five Below is, so you guys are gonna have to give me a hot minute to try and find it. Everything is just opening. I didn't realize how early I was. I'm already done with class for the day, so really just look around but we're here for five below they opened like three minutes ago so we gotta find it find the five below let's see what they have for car parts all right so there were no good things there at all uh, everything was terrible so we're gonna go to walmart all right so the quick realization that i came to is that i would rather spend more money at walmart and do a walmart car mods video than waste 20 bucks at five below and not actually get anything worth my time I was going to do the LED light strips, but those are all USB powered, and the problem with that is you can only run two strips if you have the two block USB thing, so we're going to go to Walmart and see what we can get for under 50 bucks there. I think we can uh, make out pretty good. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. Why aren't you flying away? Fly away. Why aren't they flying? They're birds. Why is that one just sitting there? That one is literally just sitting there. Why are they not doing anything? What's wrong with these seagulls? Prelude, Walmart, car parts, let's go. All right, so I found the speakers. They got a sub box for two, 120. Not sure what I'm looking for. All right, so like I said in the Walmart, guys, I just couldn't convince myself to pull the trigger on any of those speaker systems. This video has changed from like five below to Walmart, and now it's gonna be can you get a good speaker system on Facebook Marketplace? I got bored and I figured like, what's better than buying cheap new stuff is good cheap used stuff. So I'm going to pick up a 600 watt JL Audio, I think it's either a 10 or a 12 inch sub, with an amp, an 880 watt Sony Explode amp, and some wires, you got like the whole starter kit basically. Um, we agreed on 200, which is pretty cheap for everything considering the sub alone without the box. I'm pretty sure it goes for about 220. He says everything works good. We're gonna try to install it in the school parking lot. I'm hoping it's not too terrible, but I'm gonna head out right now and then I gotta go back to campus and grab some lunch before the diner closes. All right, so I just picked up, it was a 600 watt sub, a Sony Explode, uh, 880 watt amp, and some wires to actually run it. There's something in my door card vibrating. Anyway, gonna head back to college. I'll show you guys the stuff, and I'm gonna try to wire it up in the parking lot. Don't know how bad this is gonna go, but I got like a 35, 40 minute drive back, so let's get to it. Okay, 
that's not closed. So I just had lunch. Yes, I just had lunch. There's a baby yellow jacket on my window. Oh, I don't like that one bit. Anywho, just had lunch. This is what we picked up. So I got this JL Audio 600 watt sub in the box. Uh, some wires that I don't know how to connect. We have the installation stuff, bunch of wires, don't know how to connect those. And we have a Sony Explode 880 watt amp. Also don't know how to connect any of that. The only tool I have here at college is a 7 16 wrench. And I think I need a Phillips head to make that work. We're gonna see what we can do. Okay, so it looks like a Radio Shack just took a shit in my trunk, but I'm figuring it out slowly but surely. So, uh, this is called the signal wire, the thin one, and this is gonna go from the amp into the radio. This is sort of like what connects it, obviously. These two on the sub are gonna go into this one, those two right there, which go into the amp. And then right now I'm working on the thick red wire to get it power. So it'll go from the, it'll go battery, fuse, and then into the sub. Working on the fuse right now, I didn't realize I would need an Allen to do it, but I have a tool, a multi-tool, and I'm using it to loosen it. Don't know how tight I'm gonna get it, but I should be able to get it pretty good. And then I'm gonna put the fuse in, which is a start. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't have a meeting at 2.30 like I thought I did, which is really annoying. So now I'm on my way to Harbor Freight so I can grab some tools just because I want to do this somewhat right. I don't want my car to catch on fire or kill its own battery. So I'm going to Harbor Freight. I have a buddy who's like sort of talking through the process and name's Seth. So he's trying to help me out with this uh, just because I have no idea what I'm doing. Like I said, heading to Harbor Freight now and hopefully I can finish it in the parking lot. Um. Yeah, that's kind of sketchy sounding, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So, Harbor Freight, grab some tools, um, I also have to figure out a lot of things, but I'll go over that when I get the tools I need. I'm getting wire cutters, uh, some connectors, like a little electrical kit, and that should do the trick. Alright, first time trying out this Harbor Freight. Blue's parked, let's see if we can find the tools we need. Check that thing out. All right, got a bunch of tools. Just gonna do that. Got a bunch of tools, a lot more than I needed, but the same price that I paid for all of this, and I'll show you guys all what I got in a second, was the same price as one wrench set from Lowe's. So uh, I'm not complaining. Started raining. I was gonna do this in the parking lot here, but it's raining now. I just scratched my car. Oh no. Okay, well, it's raining. Fun fact. Okay, it started raining again. Let's do some wiring in the rain. So, I bought a screwdriver set because it was like 10 bucks and the regular screwdrivers are just as expensive. Uh, I bought that. I bought, let's see, a whole electrical connector kit. I bought zip ties because I like zip ties and I wanted some more zip ties. I got three different hex keys. I got wire strippers, which are super vital for installing speakers. And then in here, I have two separate wrench sets. This should be everything I need. I really wish it wasn't raining. I don't know where to park so that there's an overhang because nowhere is here is indoors. But I guess we're just going to work in the rain. I'm going to start by getting things connected up front in the car while it's raining because I'm in the car and it's not raining in the car. Just to keep you guys in the loop, I ended up unplugging the radio entirely and I'm pissed at myself for not just buying the nice Apple CarPlay radio from Walmart. Probably gonna go back tomorrow and pick it up because I didn't realize how easy it was to take out that radio. In any case, uh, this is the old plug. I'm gonna take the red signal wire that tells key on power. I'm gonna splice in my small blue one, which is right here. Splice it into the red one right there and then splice it into the sub in the back and that'll basically make it so the sub's not always on. It'll turn off with key power. If it's not working, then I'll just connect it to the other red one, but this one should work, which is awesome because it means I don't have to splice into my radio power on. Making progress. So I used the male and female connector. I spliced it into that extra piece of wire. It's not perfect, but I have some electrical tape around it. I'm gonna solder it when I get home. So I got that, so the signal wire and then the signal wires ran into the back of the amp. Now we're gonna go into the trunk 
and we're going to try to get the amp power and ground and once it has power and ground I can check that my signal wire works because the lights should light up and then I just have to connect it to the sub. Wow, that sounds easier than it is. Okay, so it's the next day. I emptied out the trunk. I couldn't get the offset light to turn on, which apparently turns on when the amp is producing too much DC current. Or something else. I'm not quite sure. A lot of people are saying it could be a bad ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to redo everything and make sure it's perfect. I'm going to start up at the head unit because one of the ground wires needs to be redone. I'm just going to go from there, I'm going to work my way back, and hopefully we can get this fixed. The guy did say that he would help me install it tomorrow afternoon if I needed help still, which is pretty cool of him, but I really want to get it done myself, so I'm going to give it another go. Alright, so the wires, I got the radio back in, the wires are ran up through there, through the carpet in this trim piece. This is the only little bit you can see, it's like a tiny little bit of blue peeking out, and then it goes through the seats, behind the seats. And then they come out into the trunk. So now what we're going to do, we're going to make sure these are solid on the battery. Then we're going to wire it back into the amp. We're going to do the remote, which is the signal wire, the ground, and the positive. So it has been an extraordinarily long three days, but I finally got it working. Now, I'll be honest, I don't entirely remember where we left off last time, but uh, you'll notice I have a new amp. That's because this old amp that I bought had a blown internal transistor. So I bought the Jensen 600 watt. This thing makes it bump. Runs pretty cool, relatively speaking, for amps. So that's awesome. Obviously, it's not mounted pretty, but it's there. I ended up switching out all my wire. I am now running a 4 gauge wire to a 100 watt fuse right here. So that way there, if I ever want to go bigger, I can. I can run just about whatever I want on 4 gauge, at least up to 1600 watts. And then we have the 600 watt peak 300 watt RMS 10 inch JL Audio 10W04, or 10W40, it's not oil. It's something, it's a 040 10W, I don't know, that. So I'm gonna turn the key, I'm gonna show you guys what this thing does, cause it kind of, kind of bumps. Vision by EBC. So admittedly, it's not the bassiest. I kind of want to go a bit bigger, but um, it's not really an option at the moment because I just dumped all my money into this setup. But I hope you guys like this adventure of installing a subwoofer in my college parking lot. Granted, it took a few more days than I thought. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did like it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're updated on my next video. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.